the uh, natural resources is something such as a forest, mineral deposit, a fresh water that is found in na nature and is necessary to, useful to humans. Uh, the Menominee people have long recognized the need of, for balance between the environment for short term and future generations. Menominee culture and traditions have always taught to never take more resources than produced within natural cycles so that all life can be sustained. This especially refers to the forest, one of the largest natural resources on the reservation. Long ago, Chief Oshkosh proposed the idea of cutting across the reservation at such a rate that there would always be timber ready to cut. To this day, MT still uses traditional beliefs as the foundation for management practices in order to sustainably keep the forest alive and still growing for future generations. Ecologists group plants and trees usually found together in communities. These plants and communities are different kinds of forests on the reservation. There are many forest cover types on the reservation and white pine is one of them. White pine, one of 33 major tree species, 16% of cover type and 19% of log volume. Uh, this map was last updated July 2010 and it shows the red in the acreage of white pine at 34,573 acres. Here you can see the red line on various places on the map is where white pine maintenance thin is. Uh, white pine management. White pine management has in intermediate shade tolerance, making it can work with middle ranges of light availability, remaining competitive with 10 to 30 percent of full light. This also allows them to, re to germinate and establish under an existing forest canopy, where they'll want wait until a local disturbance provides new light, at which point they can respond with accelerated growth to fill a gap in the canopy. White pine lives to be 200 years, a few even longer. White pine needs even age management, which is practice of m managing one age of timber by harvesting all trees at the same time, either by a clear cutting or in several cuttings over a short time period to produce stands that are all the same age or nearly so. Menominee regenerates white pine at 150 to 800, 150 to 800, 180 years old. Uh, regeneration is done using the shelter wood system because white pine needs near full sun and a scarified seed bed, which is bare minimal, mineral soil. Naturally, this happened through wind and fire. Shelter woods mimic this disturbance. The shelter wood treatment system has multiple steps. The first cut remove hardwood understory and some pine overstory to allow sunlight and about 30 to 50 percent canopy closure. Next, scarify the site using mechanical anchor chains or fire. Wait for seed development. This can take several years before you get a good cone crop. Once you have a good cone crop, seeds fall in October. Then you can do the fall or the final cut that winter. Final cut harvest, remove all but one or two trees per acre. After, you, after stands has regenerated new pine seedlings, you must ensure it does not get overtopped by competition. You can do this by doing surveys to check the survival competition, uh, possible TSI, just timber stand improvement, brush saws, release pine seedlings, do this for 15 years, starting at the age 25, 30 years, commercially thinning until ages 150 to 180 years. During our internship, we did, did surveys on white pine stands. We counted and documented how many white pine were in one plot, which were one 100th acre plots. We, we did many different stands that were for one to 15 years. And turn it over here. <clears throat> Other tasks during this internship. Garlic mustard, we were... 
10th grade. Yeah. We were spraying for the invasive species garlic mustard, which is an invasive plant species that is left uncontrolled, can dominate a site and outcompete native plants, therefore reducing forest diversity and inhibiting natural forest regeneration. We sprayed an herbicide called glyphosate which has been approved by MITW Environment Services. The herbicide has a low toxicity to animals and has a short half-life and quickly breaks down when it contact with the soil. Glyphosate kills the garlic mustard plants without minimal to no effect to other plant soil. Garlic mustard was first found on a reservation in the early 2000s by Dutchman Hill on Camp 4. It is usually takes up to seven years to fully get rid of garlic mustard from one area. This map is from June 2010 and shows the areas in red where garlic mustard has been found. Areas are treated periodically throughout the summer and early fall. Signs are posted near areas where treatment is underway so people can avoid going into areas until treatment is complete. We did fish surveys with rich anamita, snapping turtles usually ate the smaller fish we did the surveys on and so they would get caught in the net. We would have to take them out of the net and put them back in the water. More pictures from the lake. We did the fish surveys with Richard. Lake was this called? Yeah, correct. What lake was it? Uh, lower, our lower bass. It was lower bass lake. These are some of the things we saw when we were doing road savers for invasive species plant. Well, we went out with the markers. Here we were out with the markers and learned how they mark the trees. Jeff Greeno showed us burial sites, camps, the remains of camps and fields where corn was grown by our ancestors. He also told the stories of our ancestors and our Menominee ways. <laughs> Big Blue, our truck. Luck with Big Blue, a complete of times. <laughs> Tim always got us stuck. <laughs> Wildlife that we saw while out doing different things in the woods. We saw five bear, was it? Five bear, yeah. Five bear. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation. Any questions? I have a question. On the tree marking, how do they, what, how do they determine what um, stand to mark them? How much territory do they, do they cover in a day? That usually goes by. They get an order that gets sent sent down, and then like it's a certain area, and depending on what type type of area and that, and they go through. And I'm pretty sure it was seventy percent that they mark, and they try to leave the good trees there and take out all the the older ones and the ones that are kind of like have growth and that, and they try to leave the best ones there. So then the next time they come through, it will be even better. Our them trees will be there and better ones will be growing. So it's richer for the site. <laughs> Any other questions? Hmm? When you had the slides of uh, working with the fish and you had to pull the snapping turtles out, what were you doing with the fish? Why are you trimming that then? We were um, fit, uh, trimming them, their fins. And we're weighing them and uh, measuring them. Why do you trim their fins? To know that we caught them once before. We was on the, we was on the same lake for like three days, so <laughs> we caught a couple of the same fish over and over again too. It's just they would they would catch them and then they would take some take the uh, all the uh, paperwork and that and send it out and then they get get uh, I don't know numbers and that stats back from certain people. What kind of data was you were you getting from the fish? I mean, what about these? 
um, just so you can see how, how the fish are surviving in there and like their ages and estimate how much yeah estimate how many is in there and yeah their survival What um, what do you think is the um, the garlic mustard? What do you think the outlook for that getting rid of that is? Um, have more uh, reservation people to help with it to take it away. Yeah, you right. think it's going to be successful? Uh, yeah, it's right now. It's like uh, we're they're combating it, and it's taken quite a while. It could take up to seven to ten years to get it out of one area. They got a spray and then their seeds drop and then it regrows again. So it's kind of taking a little bit to get rid of it, but we got it kind of contained to certain areas on the res, so that's looking good. Have they sprayed an area and then, um, you know, the vegetation dies in that area? How long does it take before that the vegetation comes back in the sprayed area, the natural um, Uh, I wasn't really sure about that. I didn't really get get a hold of that one. Uh, good question. There. <laughs> somebody here you can ask. Yeah, uh, we got Dave. <laughs> He's actually the main dude. <laughs> 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 yeah, it did an excellent job covering the, the, the background in the garlic mustard. It's really great. Um, but I just say is we try to spray it early in the spring. The garlic comes up first, and you try to spray it before all the native plants come. Up. So you get the spray now, but, but you have to do a couple repeat sprays because the plant is. Such a pest and it's so persistent that the seeds keep on sprouting. So you have to do a couple sprays and say, you know, the same square footage through the summer. So you do impact, you do get a little what we call a uh, friendly fire. You know, mm. you know. yeah. uh, but we've seen that places where we've controlled and didn't have to spray anymore, uh, the native plants just, you know, we're talking small areas, you know, it's not like over, you know, 20 acres. It's like you're talking like the size of this table. So the neighboring plants seed right in pretty quickly. Yeah, and then they talked about the seed bank, the garlic mustard had the seeds stay in the soil for up to six years. There's like a delay on their sprouting. So that's why you can't, you wish we could just go in there one year and get rid of it, but you have to follow up for about six years. How is it spread? It's the seed. The seed, when it grows, gets fully grown. It'll, uh, the top of it pops and like it lets all the seeds go and they're really light so it gets carried through the wind otherwise animals or humans can come through there and track it and then it's the seeds are on their on their hoofs or the tires and when they walk somewhere it'll drop off and start growing again and once that grows it just keeps going so how did how did it get here uh it was brought here actually way back in like i think the early 1700s if i'm not mistaken by the uh, europeans they brought it it's actually a uh, spice that they used But they used it in their gardens and that, but then it got out of control, I guess, like spread and it's been invasive ever since. What it does is too, is it takes over an area and it will totally cut out everything else from growing, everything underneath. So it's kind of not really good for our forest. I have a question. Hmm? Um, your focus um, was on the, was it mustard? Uh, like mustard. Yeah. As a plant that's probably not native to this area. Yes. Yeah. Are there other um, probably non-native aspects coming in that should be of a concern? Uh, there is actually quite a like quite a bit more actually, but they're not as as, as aggressive as garlic mustard is. So we can kind of like mark it down, treat it, and then like go back in a couple years to see if it spread anymore or not it's this it ain't as priority as garlic mustard it is as it takes over so quickly in the area but there are there are plenty more uh invasive plants out there don't want the res what about insects uh yeah there's actually a lot of those too there there's the what is that the pine I'm beetle I'm yeah i had i'm an ash borer there's a lot, lot of those that are killing a lot of trees there's different diseases for trees oak wilt disease There's actually kind of a lot going on with invasives and diseases, but seem to get them or have them under control, though. Or we know about them, so that's a good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. A couple questions for you. You talked about doing the white pine regen surveys. Out of all the shelters that you guys are surveying, 
Could you categorize the success of those? Were you seeing a lot of successful regen, or were some having trouble? What were you guys seeing? So like the first and five year plant uh, surveys, mm -hmm. there was good region in those. And uh, through like the seven and 10 years, those are kind of hard to find because it was so brushy. Right. Got a lot of, lot of the competition coming in through there. So, but that's when you go back through too, as well as the roller, are not roller chat, but they thin it out as well. TSI. TSI, yeah. Timber stand improvement, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know why they blocked the roads off? The garlic mustard? Stop traffic from going and collecting all the seeds and carrying them away. Mm -hmm. Spreading it. Oh, okay, spreading. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. I'm just curious about the pictures you had of, um, of turtles. Yeah. Did you guys see any like, really huge turtles in the lakes? Yeah, there was a couple of really big ones, but pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> Grabbed them out. We just had the same with them. We just snipped their claws, one of their claws, so we know if we caught them again. But we just let them go back in there. But and they stung. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> <laughs> really bad. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Two more for you. For each of you, what was the most challenging aspect of the summer, and what was the most enjoyable? The enjoyable was just being out there in the woods and learning trees and vases. What was the most challenging thing for you, Dwayne? Um, walking through the brush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I would say yeah, pretty much mine too is the worst part was when we would, when we were doing the white pine uh, regions, we, uh, the one, one through five years weren't too bad, but then when we got through the five through 15 in it, it was brush as high as us, so it was, <laughs> it was pretty rough and it was pretty hot out there, so <laughs> we had flies and Bees. Yeah, bees. We ran into several groundhogs. <laughs> but other than that, that was probably the, the hardest part, I think. But like like Dwayne said, the funnest part was just being out in the woods, being able to see the reservation and learn more about it, learn our trees and animals and stuff like that. It's pretty good. Quite the experience. The final question I have for you guys is because you did a variety of different things this summer, trying to get you out doing stuff with Donnie and Rich and you know, forestry. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any idea of what area of natural resources you want to focus on? Um, decide, maybe you haven't decided that yet. Yeah, I'm not really decided anywhere up in forestry. Yeah. I just like being out in the woods and I, I don't, it doesn't really matter if I'm working with animals or plants or trees. As long as I'm working for our forestry up here and out in the woods all day. <laughs> I can't do an office. <laughs> <laughs> well, any more questions? I have one. Um, you worked with the white pine and I think it's the clear cutting that the forestry does with the white pine and I know there was a lot of uh, uh, people angry about the clear cutting going on. If you had someone who was angry about you with the clear cutting for the white pine, what would you say to them? <laughs> I'd tell them that we're cutting it to make a better forest for our future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certain cuts are made like clear cuts. Them are them rarely happen anymore. We barely do any more clear cuts. They do shelter wood cuts and like selective cuts. So it's like like what Dwayne said, it's like they cut, but it's for a reason. There's a reason for it, and it's like it's for the future of the trees to grow up better and live longer. I should say. <laughs> a different species or mostly the same species. If if it's ain't too like chopped up and that from roller chaining and stuff, but. Most likely it'll stick to the same same type of plant that they took out from there because it's the right type of soil and all that, cover type and all that for it. Help you all a little bit. What's unique about even age management? Why do you have to use even age management for those species? Think about the shade tolerance. <laughs> so they can grow the same and if one grows bigger than the other, that, that shade from that tree will cover out the other tree and it'll block it from growing. Okay. Well, right. well, if there was um, no one there to manage it a long time ago, how did they? How did the pine stand come up to be the solid pine? Uh, as far as I know, a long time ago, they used to just do uh, burns and that, and that would help to regenerate pine with with the when they would it would be bare minimal soil, and then the, co the cones would drop with the seeds in them, and then they would grow from that way. But they do that nowadays, and they also go in and plant them by hand as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
No more questions? I have a question. Do either of you plan on going to college after here? Um, yeah, right now I'm in natural resources in my second degree, so I'll see you after I finish this degree if I'm going to go out further, but other than that, I'm trying to get up at forestry right now, so <laughs> I ain't got to do no more schooling. <laughs> it's taking too long. <laughs> Seems like it anyway. <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, I plan on going to Stevens Point. Mm -hmm. cool. All right. Any more questions? All right, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Oof, and I always start sweating when I'm in these. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your thumb drive on it? Yeah.